Paul was a man committed. He was originally committed to eradicating Christians. And then on that Damascus road, he met the risen Jesus. And he changed. He changed his view. He changed his mission. He changed his target. But he didn't lose that sense of commitment. As far as I can tell from the commentaries, Paul never went to Colossae. But while he was imprisoned in Rome, where he spent two years under house arrest, he still heard about the Colossians. And he was concerned about them. Colossae was in Asia Minor, now Turkey, and was famous for red dyed wool. The city went into decline and little remains of the place now apart from part of a theatre. And even in Paul's time, the city wasn't very noticeable, wasn't very important. Its power had diminished. It is believed that a man called Ephesus, and I'm never very good at pronouncing these, these names, brought Christianity to Colossae. But where he heard about it is not recorded. But he was heavily involved in the setup. And he was with Paul in Rome. Whether as a prisoner or not, we just don't know. But he was very concerned about the church at Colossae. And he worked hard for them. And it was as a result of this concern for the church that Paul wrote his letter. Chapter 4 of that letter gives an update on the list of the people who were with Paul in Rome. And the list includes Luke, the Gospel writer, which I think I'd read before and completely forgotten. And despite the distances and the problems of communication, they didn't have email in those days, I gather, there were still connections between the group of Christians and Paul in Rome. And so he heard about the progress of the church. And the church at Colossae had fallen into some sort of heresy. They didn't have the benefits of a written book to fall back on, to help them on their course of the path of Christianity. But an analysis of Paul's letter seems to imply that the heresies were diverse. But we just don't know how common they were, just that they existed. And Paul wrote this letter to refute the heresies and get the Colossians back on the correct path. And I would like to, a couple of minutes this morning, look at the positives that Paul expressed in that passage you have just heard. And I've picked out part of verse 10. You have been given fullness in Christ. You have been given fullness in Christ. And I've picked three words that relate to this passage. Release, redeem, renewal. Release, redeem, and renewal. First of all, release. Jesus has released us. He has released us from sin. Released us from a life constrained by sin. Constrained by regulations. Constrained by slavery to sin. Jesus came to this earth and taught us that God does not necessarily want us to follow rules and regulations. But he wants us to love him to keep ourselves tuned in, to use a modern expression to him. Jesus didn't necessarily follow the rules and regulations that were put in place by human leaders. He healed on the Sabbath, not allowed. He allowed his disciples to pick corn on the Sabbath, not allowed. Jesus knew all the regulations that had been built into the Jewish religion and he replaced them with two simple commandments. Love God and love your neighbour as yourself. Everything else just gets in the way. Jesus came to show that the life of a Christian should be simple. 
that demands of a Christian are more controlled by the love of God and the following of God rather than a thick book of rules. And it always amuses me, and apologies for the reference, but as you know, I used to be a Methodist, and the Methodist books of rules are two volumes and quite heavy things. If you want to keep the door open at night, that's a jolly good idea to use them. I shouldn't have said that, but you know. But Jesus released us from human rules, from human regulations, that are human, as I say, they're human in origin. He's released us from the power of sin. He's taken away our sin. It still exists, but it does not and should not constrain us any longer. It's not an impediment to our relationship with God. He has paid the price of sin. He has suffered so that we can have a clean slate in our relationship with God. So he has released us, released us from the power of sin, released us from the power of regulations. Secondly, he has redeemed us. Our release from the power of sin is because of his action of redemption. He has put our relationship with God back on track. It was by him redeeming us that we were released to have this relationship. He didn't need to re redeem us. He could have left us as we were, left us outside that relationship with God. But because he's a loving God, he gave us another chance. By sending his son, he showed how important it was to rescue us from the state we'd fallen into. Jesus came to restore this relationship. Paul says, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. That was verse 13. And so we are redeemed. We are released. But that's not the end. It's the starting position of our relationship. A restored relationship with God. Jesus renewed us. He took away our sinful ways and put us back into God's hands. No longer under the control of dark powers, but in a better place, restored to our life with God, in this world and in the next. We must be encouraged in heart and united in love so that this relationship is productive. We can understand just what Jesus did for us, even us. And through this partnership, we may learn from Jesus, learn about the mysteries of God, learn about the care that God has for us, learn about how much he loves us. Renewal is not a one-time experience. It is an ongoing, a continual progress. We keep improving our relationship with God, deepening it, extending it. Just as a relationship with another human being needs us to keep working at it. So it is with a relationship with God. It needs constant work to keep it fresh, active and deepening. Renewal is the start to a relationship that got stuck and renewal leads to revival, revival back to the start of that first meeting. Paul had heard that the Colossians were having some issues with their beliefs, that Jesus was the saviour, was their saviour. So he encouraged them to remember that Jesus had released them from their old life, a life condemned. He had released them to become citizens of heaven. This was because Jesus had redeemed them by his suffering and death. They accepted Jesus and they were renewed, revived, and they should rejoice in that situation. In Paul's words, so then, just as we received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, strengthened in his faith as we were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. 
we have accepted Jesus. Let us allow him to revive us, to deepen our relationship so that we can become better citizens of this world and better citizens of heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we sometimes find Paul's words quite difficult to understand, quite difficult to follow. But we know it is a simple message, a message that we need to love you as much as we can to keep that relationship going, to keep it deepened. And we pray that we will continue to do that and get closer to you as we live our lives. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.